Welcome to Kyala Gray Market, our daily program on Nifty, Bank Nifty and Dollar Analysis. What do we do here? We look at Nifty, Bank Nifty and Dollar Charts. We then look at Open Interest Data. We then look at um, FIDI data. Our idea is simple. Uh, we don't listen to news. We don't listen to uh, commentary. We don't look at economics. We just look at what the big guys are doing and we try to copy them. And we just play that game, right? Uh, so um, uh, good expiry for us, actually. Everything went right. Uh, I think on 8th February, our idea was the best thing to do is an iron condor. It's a very conservative iron condor, which we did. 18,000 call sell and 17,400 put sell. Market was very much in range. We also said that uh, we can play this game where if 17,800 is broken, we can sell puts of 17,700 or below. So uh, whether you played the game of selling the put or you played the game of iron condor, everything worked well. This is one of those expiries which was looking range bound from the beginning itself, right? It was very clear in the data, right? One of those very predictable expiries where you had to do nothing fancy, just play the safe game, take one, two percent return and be happy, right? Uh, <clears throat> but that's of course uh, <clears throat> done. Now let's look forward to what is happening next and try to get a bigger picture of what Nifty is <clears throat> probably going to do. <clears throat> What is new trading timing, sir? What is new? This is a new trading timing coming. Boss, new trading timing karna nahi chahiye. Like, I don't know why people are uh, extending the trading timings. Already there is a lot of stress in marriages across the country. What they want to like and get people divorces by letting them trade till 10 o'clock. Uh, I hope they're, <laughs> they're not doing that thing. Right? Like, uh, I, 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 I don't get it though. Like, uh, um, um yeah anyway in the mornings people are trading from their offices right so what evening instead of spending time with their family they'll trade again huh? it's like now nsc is directly competing with facebook twitter instagram etc for people's attention span huh? so then <coughs> Surya is asking, will it reduce gap? Why up gaps and all it's okay but my bigger worry is if retail investors sit and trade so okay, let me put it in perspective, right? I've been a I've been a proper trading addict, right? Because I used to start trading at eight in the morning, uh, Tokyo Japanese yen for a bank, and then I out of sheer boredom, I was twenty seven, single, nothing to do, you know, having fun in life. Um, so I was like, okay, let me <laughs> see what happens if I trade till London close. So I used to do from eight a.m. to um, ten p.m. and it's extremely mentally damaging, right? Uh, so uh, I don't think it's a good idea if people decide to extend trading hours, but then that's just me. But anyway, let's let's go to today's analysis and see what the market's up to. First and foremost, Nifty is looking strong indeed. We kind of saw this coming long time back uh, because we said this, right? So if the bigger picture is what matters more. And the bigger picture says that Nifty has a trend line which connects COVID, Ukraine low and Adani low running <coughs> parallelly. And there's a this trend line and this trend line is forming like a triang triangle. It's like a, it's like something else, right? I don't know what it's called, but there's a trend line here. There's a much bigger trend line here. The longer term trend line is stronger than shorter term trend line. There's a very high chance that Nifty will break, break out, right? And also, if you look at weekly, there is 50 weekly moving average. There is this bullish piercing with a lot of volumes. And now Nifty is again rejecting from lower levels. If you look at Bank Nifty, bullish piercing with a lot of volumes, more volumes than any other month after uh, October 2021. So this is the highest volumes we are seeing in a month after October 2021. Strong comeback in Bank Nifty looks like a bullish uh, uh, piercing. And now the bullish piercing is getting a confirmation with uh, what looks like tomorrow will be a close above yesterday's close, right? And if you look at Nifty's weekly, again, bullish piercing candle has been confirmed by a close above the close of last week. So if tomorrow Nifty closes anywhere above 17,850 kind of levels, then we have a confirmation for this bullish piercing candle. Similarly, if Bank Nifty tomorrow closes anywhere above, <clears throat> uh, 41,500-ish levels, we have a confirmation for bullish piercing. Dollar is looking like it's taking resistance at the top of this uh, trend line. And if dollar tomorrow drops, you know, another 
10, 20 paisa, then we have a shooting star, which is also indicating uh, weakness in dollar. So strength in Nifty, strength in bank Nifty, uh, strength weak, strength in rupee, weakness in dollar. All of these three are signs of risk sentiment. I mean, people willing to take risks in the market. Therefore, uh, risky asset class might rally. And it is, you know, the good times for retail investors in the sense people who buy Nifty and put money in mutual funds, etc. And we are poised for a bull market in uh, things like uh, this and things like Nifty and Bank Nifty and bear market in dollar, that is bull market in rupee. So charts are indicating strengths. So Nifty confirming last week's bullish candle. Nifty and Bank Nifty both. There are some resistances, but we have to be aware of them. But it looks like it's consolidating, right? So I'll tell you what is making me disbelieve in the resistances. There is no rejection here. As an ki yaha pe jake test ho raha hai. It's like slowly and steadily people are absorbing, right? So for example, right, if you look at this candle I'm hovering over, first February Wednesday, this is a proper rejection, right? It went down and it went up. It's a it's a sign that somebody is buying. But here, if you look at today's candle or yesterday's candle, there's no sign that anybody is selling. Because if there was that sign, there would be rejection, right? There's no rejection happening at all. So, <clears throat> sorry, my suspicion is that there is a lot of strength going on in uh, Nifty and we might be seeing the consolidation before the eventual breakout. But to be aware, the levels where resistance can come are 18,000 simply because there is this trend line and uh, this previous um, uh, this this 100 DMA somewhere here, right? But otherwise, Nifty is looking very solid. I can't say the same about Bank Nifty that Bank Nifty is solid simply because <coughs> unlike Nifty, I can't see a very clear support emerging for Bank Nifty. But having said that, Bank Nifty is also trying to test multiple resistances without rejection and that is important right this level which horizontal level we drew around 41800 types and the 100 dma are the levels where sellers are supposed to emerge but it's not selling off right there's no rejection and the steady consolidation which is kind of making me suspect we can see a breakout right but we can't predict a breakout because before a breakout happens it's best to wait it out see anyway it's only some uh, 100 odd points right so if you see that strength coming into bank nifty once this level is taken out you can go along and then uh you know the rest is history uh, so now let's look at open interest right and what do we look at we look at next week's open interest right 16th february <clears throat> this is Early signs of 18,000 being a resistance because people have sold 18,000 calls, but it's not like it's lacking support. There are several support zones. PCR is 0 0.9, uh, which is mildly bullish, I would even say. Um, but it's a it's early to say anything. Neutral option chain, early to say anything. Neutral option chain, early to say anything. I am not going to take that 18,000 call resistance seriously for two reasons. One, all these round figure numbers, right, 18,000, 17,000, 17, etc., they tend to have high OIs because people tend to build <coughs> open interest early on there. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a, something we should take seriously. And overall, right, number of calls and puts written today is <coughs> kind of similar. Uh, then if you look at FI and AI data, again, there's nothing here. They have bought more calls than puts. Uh, sorry, I just write PCR of 0 0.9 as mildly bullish. Hey, option data, nothing much. Uh, slightly bullish because they bought more calls than they bought puts, right? Let me just read the comments. Do you adjust positions? So I'm going to sound like such a you know, but uh, I don't really trade. Uh, <clears throat> also, I mean, I, I, I'll tell the story later. So I'll, I'll just uh, give the Gyan session later. So FIA futures data uh, is interesting because uh, neutral on futures, neutral on stocks, slightly bullish on uh, equity. Is it neutral? This is neutral. 
So my verdict is that uh, bullish bias, but small possibility of eighteen thousand being a resistance. Small possibility, right? Uh, trades I would do is definitely put spreads, but I'd probably see the thing is this, right? It's very tempting to do call spreads. But the problem with call spreads is that if there is actually a resistance there, then I'll just lose the entire theta because of that. I'll do put spreads, but not short term. I'll do put spreads of uh, spreads or even further put spreads. One second, no? one second. I'm just, I just, I think somebody knocked at my. So I so I'll explain the rationale why I don't want to do next week a put spread right or call spread. So if I do a call spread for next week, if this touches here and sells off a little bit, then I lose the entire premium. If I do a put spread, if it touches here and uh, uh, sells off, then my RR is less than one and I lose money, right? So basically, I don't want to do a put spread with a very bad RR. I want to do a put spread with good RR. And I don't want to definitely do a call spread because if I do it and it doesn't go up and instead of hours around here or this resistance plays out and even if it drops like back to 17,700 or something, I'll unnecessarily do so. So my preferred trade in this situation will be, see, it's, it's a nice trade in the sense that I'm thinking, okay, I don't know next week. I don't know next week. We are March the October. This is my hypothesis, right? So in that case, what I will do is I'll do a bullish put spread of March. And I'll tell you what's the good news about, uh, or if, if, if it's ultimately everything boils down to a view, right? If you are believing that March the Nifty ko upari jana hai, right? You get a put spread with a decent RR, right? This is two RR is two. 3,100, 7,000. So it's it's a decent RR, right? But if you were to do the same put spread for next week, your RR is 2.7, basically from 2.2, to 22.6. It's less favorable. Uh, if you do 29th March put spread, you get a slightly better RR of 2.2. And if even if let's say Nifty gives you a temporary blip in the next one day or one week or so, this spread you can hold till March, right? I mean, but of course you have to believe that this only applies when you think that, okay, this long-term trend line is eventually going to save you and therefore I'm going to do it. And another put spread you can consider is, uh, you can play a slightly more defensive put spread. 17,600 put if you can, 17,700 put you can sell and 17,500 you can buy as protection. This is an RR of 3.1. Uh, or you can even do 17,600 and 17,400. This is 3.5 RR, but then it's really, really defensive, right? But I wouldn't consider this because uh, if it actually goes to 17,300 or something, right? Anyway, uh, then that thing is broken and you're going to get toasted. So if you're doing a put spread, I'll suggest a slightly aggressive put spread because if Nifty holds this trend line uh, this month or next month or whatever, then I would expect this trend line to give a bounce back and this thing to go anyway above 17,800 in a month. Like in one week or something, it can probably go below. But if you believe in this long term trend line, I'm thinking that Nifty will be probably higher in March. So if my hypothesis is that Nifty will be higher in March, then I'll try to sell a Nifty uh, March put spread, which is what I am thinking of doing. Right? If hypothetically, if I were trading, I would do the 17,800 put spread. Worst case, you lose two and a half times your upside, but for a put spread, it's not a bad deal at all, right? That would be my verdict. Uh, so Feb end or even further, I would even say March, right? Uh, far away puts, let me just, uh, far away put spreads. This bull put spreads is my preferred trade. We expect credit switch tremors from tomorrow to next week. Yeah, credit switch. See, uh, okay, today is not a runny nose. I went to the swimming pool and I snorted a lot of water. This is from that. This is not my uh, usual cold. Uh, do I expect credit switch tremors from tomorrow to next week? Yeah, credit Swiss is, I don't know what is the credibility of credit Swiss. 
because uh, <laughs> come on man we all know what swiss banks do right of all the people why are they acting see i'm not saying that adani is right or adani is wrong i'm not taking that side at all but okay here's one thing right if i'm not mistaken swiss switzerland was even an ally of hitler a lot of plundered money was kept in swiss banks back in the 1940s and 40 whatever whatever right i can't see i understand anybody acting like i'm such a holy person you guys are like frauds and all but please here swiss banks ko to ye cheez nahi karna chahiye everybody knows duniya bhar ka black money kahan pe hai so what is this swiss bank doing holy stuff like oh you know what we don't do like aise uh, companies ka bond hum nahi rakhenge <laughs> that's bs right so i don't i, I don't like if i were uh, i i i mean, see market can have tremor might not have tremor we don't know but uh, you know of all the people on earth the swiss bank should be the last people to cry somebody else ka foul um, and uh, i think swiss credit swiss was themselves on the brink of uh, going wrong very recently pradeep was saying commodity is sensible we are drifting towards it see the only problem is uh, do you really want to trade till midnight uh, but i i don't know like okay we will probably we can do that now but we'll think about it right okay so i'll just uh, add one just one one social service message right this today i was reading a lot about experiences of other people who took a complete break from social media right uh and this is interesting reading list called so you should probably read this long reads on digital detox just search for long long reads on digital detox right and it's ah, this is the article it's called twitter won't miss you and it's a road map uh, of five people who tried doing digital detox i think the ones which i really like it like this number 3 cal newport and number 4 cal newport and uh, and there's a very powerful statement this person made right um he said that uh, uh uh one day we might look at uh, so if we gift a smartphone to a 13 year old child it's almost like gifting him or her a cigarette right and that line just hit me hard right it's like it's it's correct right like i have seen uh, fmri fm fmri is a brain scan which you do to f- figure out brain activity after prolonged exposure to social media for real our brains start looking like a short circuited circuit board right and you can actually search right i mean i think i think i think fmri of brain social media <laughs> right so you will actually see quite a bit of uh, social media effects of fmri uh, it's interesting right there are a lot of neurological studies uh, which are happening on how bad this stuff is going to be now imagine trading right if you're always uh, looking at so what the social media doing it's always saying that boss kuch naya aa raha hai dekh lo dekh lo right we are like oh twitter one like aa gaya one comment aa gaya or whatsapp you are always saying who has pinged me yaar koi nahi ping kar raha yaar aapko no, like see nobody important has ever pinged me on twitter on so on um, whatsapp in the last uh, 12 years right like nothing important has happened on whatsapp fir bhi main check karta hu subah subah aur aaj kuch pata nahi important aayega sha shayad ambani mere ko aaj call karega bolega sensible mein paisa dalne ka isliye i'm checking whatsapp right so now imagine trading right whatsapp might or might not give you a new kick or a number twitter might or might not have given you a like or a comment but if you actually have a trade you are pakka 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 going to see a new pnl you you definitely going to see a new pnl kuch price badla are watch list mein ek naya item aa gaya are adani upar niche ho gaya it's always novelty right see at some point we have to understand that trading more than the gambling addiction or the dopamine kick is also like a guaranteed way of looking at something and feeling novelty ki aapke paas karora ka shayad कैपिटल है फिर भी आप एक लॉट निफ्टी ट्रेड कर रहे हो एंड ओ माय पीएन इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग 1000 रुपीस अरे मजा आया मजा बट इट्स वेरी डिस्ट्रक्टिव राइट सो आई एम जस्ट स्टिल ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लोर हाउ इज इट दैट वी कैन ट्रेड वी कैन मेक सम डिसेंट रिटर्न वी कैन लर्न समथिंग बी गुड एट इट एंड येट नॉट बी हुक्ड टू इट राइट इट्स स्टिल अर्ली आई एम आई एम ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड पैरेलल्स फ्रॉम फॉर अ फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ अदर फील्ड्स बट आई थिंक 
meaningfully right and and see people will think yaar yaar kya baat kar rahe you are running a trading company you do you want to lose your customers kya see for me right if people make money it's good for us right because in the long run people will trade because they are making money because they are happy if they over trade and suddenly lose their money then it's just what's the point right even for a trading company it is better if people don't trade too much like of course you will make a lot more revenues or brokerage or something if people take hundreds of trades quickly and i mean and then they just lose out right but for us it's not the case right so if you look at sensible right sensible decided to charge subscriptions instead of a per transaction fee simply because we did not want people to trade more and we did not want our revenue model to be linked to how much people trade so for us the best thing is that ki aap trade kabhi kabhi karo thoda thoda paisa banao thoda thoda aap look at it as fun have some fun have um um uh, make a little bit money and you know keep subscribing to sensible types right so for us it's um um i mean for us, for us or you for whoever it is it's always better if you uh, trade less right it's it's such a wrong notion that uh, people think that brokers want their users to trade more that's not true brokers probably want uh, their users to trade less make money and be a user for lifetime right because brokers can monetize users in so many other ways mutual funds or equities or charging other subscription models or everything no broker i think in today's age wants a user to quickly trade to hazaro trades and lose their money but anyway so i'm just trying to draw parallels between twitter and trading and all that and that's like a long story right but anyway that is our analysis for today so the long story short is that uh, i think nifty is poised for a an up move um let's see if it works out or not right so on that note uh, i hope tomorrow's trading session and the trading session to come next week goes well for you we'll see you again on sunday as usual please take care and keep your capital safe